Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 64 here on season number two. And today we are getting into is this Domino's good for the long term? This comment comes from Ryan Hudson. Ryan actually suggested that I do a value investing look at analysis at Domino's Pizza or the stock ticker DPZ. So these videos are meant for educational purposes only and not meant to be taken as financial advice. You are responsible to protect your own assets. So please always do your own research. So we're going to be looking at is the company first of all undervalued and also is it a good company to invest in? Like I was saying on the last video that I did a value type investing on GoPro, check that out up in the corner. Uh, I asked you guys to provide me with companies that you would like me to check out. So if you could do me a favor and comment down below and let me know some companies, I will do my best to take a look at them and think in my opinion on what I would value that company at. I do use a, a book that helps me out with this value investing right now. It's a strategy put on by Good Stocks Cheap. And so that's what I am using to properly value analyze these companies so let's go ahead and take a look at domino so on the screen here as you can tell dpz do i understand it yes I, I think i understand it for the most part it's kind of a hard company to understand because they do franchises and then they also do supply to the franchise and then have their own individual store so that's kind of a little bit weird to understand and as far as products and services i went with product they offer their franchises food equipment that kind of thing. And they also profit from selling their franchises profit from selling to the end consumer along with their actual stores profit from selling to the end consumer. So that's how I kind of went through their product and service. Their customer customers are going to be the franchisees because the franchisees are paying them money in, in part of royalty. And then also the end consumer, which is paying the franchisees. And then also they're paying the company directly as well. I put this under company staples because I feel like it is a company that, that is more needed. It's a food company. So I don't know if it's necessarily like needed, needed, but it's not something that people are going out of their way to buy. It's like, hey, we want food tonight. We're going to go here to get this. It's a corporation and most of their sales come from America and Canada. They are the second largest pizza restaurant chain in the world. As far as is it good? Yes, I think that it is good in the past. It's definitely been good. Um, as you can tell, not a whole lot of negative numbers except for when you come down to stockholders equity, which I believe that's because they're doing a lot of buybacks. As you can tell from GoPro to this, return on capital employed 582%, 711%, and 423%. So that's crazy numbers. And then also free cash flow return on capital employed. So this is a, a fast growing company from what i can see and then also growth and operating income per fully diluted share this you want to be above three percent so as you can tell it's it's up at 20 percent and then 14 percent here and then also growth in book value i i changed these to negative because what's happening right here is it's it's measuring the book value growth and as you can tell that it dropped more so it went from negative eight 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 billion or negative 1.8 billion to 2.7 billion negative and so i changed those to negative percents instead of positive so i i knew that it didn't actually grow it grew in the negative direction and then liabilities to equity we would like to see this at like three or below three so i don't know if that's that's good but i feel like let's just go ahead and move on with it as far as the breath analysis goes so this is looking towards the future whether it it'll be a good candidate into the future and i I determined that I think it will be good and successful in the future. That's why I continued on. As far as a, a, a broad consumer base, yes, they do have a broad consumer base that's not going to consolidate anytime soon. And then their suppliers, they have a pretty good purchasing power. So it would be easy for them to either switch their purchasing power to somebody else. So they, so even if they're specifically relying on one supplier, it's easy for them to switch to a different supplier because they are offering like meats and dairies and, and breads and that kind of thing, which are pretty popular and, and easy to be made bargaining power for the customer uh, i don't feel like they don't have much bargaining power back integration would be like can they start their own pizza restaurant or make their own pizzas and yeah they could but i mean honestly do you want to do that and then the switching costs it would be it would be not so good for a franchise who's already invested into Domino's to switch over to like maybe a Pizza Hut. And then for the customers, yeah, it would be pretty easy for them to switch. There's other options out there for switching. As far as ba bargaining power for suppliers, it's very unlikely for them, suppliers that make cheese or something to go into the actual pizza development part of it and to build a brand like Domino's does have. And then switching costs would be low. I rated them as, as good for, for breath analysis. And then threat of a substitute, 
there's a there's a dread of direct substitute because there's they, like I said there is Pizza Hut, Papa John's, there's and then there's also local pizza shops that could be in direct opposition to them doing without. Yeah, it could happen where where a person or consumer could do without Domino's, but it's not. I don't think it's going to be likely that 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 could happen. And then there's obviously other wholly different products that meet this need of specifically pizza. There's like DiGiorno, which is pick up pizza in the store, and then there's also like. Taco Bell, McDonald's, there's other fast food chains that could be in competition as well. The threat of new entrances, as far as like taking out like the top three, like Domino's, Papa John's, and, and Pizza Hut, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Do they have a mode identification? I think that they do. A mode is basically something that sets them apart, that kind of creates this like safe space for them to be in. And I believe that their brand kind of keeps them there and then their ingrainedness maybe would keep them there as well but i definitely think that their brand is going to be something that's hard to compete with market growth they should grow i do think that they will grow based upon everything else shareholder friendliness they're pretty they're pretty friendly except for their share repurchases which i don't i don't believe that they're undervalued right now and then also they do pay a dividend so that might not be so friendly as well is it inexpensive it is not inexpensive right now we would like to see the market cap over free cash flow around seven and right now it's at at 40 and then also the ev over io which would be enterprise um, valuation over operating income we would like to see that also around the same level and right now it's way over at 25 and then market cap to book value is negative four and we would like to see that probably around three and so it's negative so i don't know if that's actually a good thing but these are more important and right now it stands at overvalued so for me it's not something that I, I am looking at at buying right now doesn't mean if the price were to drop to about maybe about $190 is what I was calculating maybe that would be a buy I would have to go through and reassess but that's what I'm looking at right now so as far as domino goes for me I'm, I'm not going to be purchasing any as of right now we'll leave it right there let's go ahead and dive into the question of the day which is how do you judge a person for, for me I judge a person mostly on nonverbal cues so when i watch someone talk and that kind of stuff i don't really listen to what they say i listen to a lot of what their facial expressions are saying what their hands are doing what their feet are doing all this kind of stuff i pay a lot more attention to nonverbal cues because i think that a lot a lot of people say 90 percent of communication is actually not what you say and so they could be telling you something that's truthful and actually being signaling that they're lying or something like that and so that's what i pay a lot of attention to is more nonverbal verbal cues and that's what i judge my opinion upon with People. Like I was saying, if you have any questions regarding Stash, Acorns, Robinhood, as well as general investing advice, business, Etsy coaching, post those questions down below. Do not forget to subscribe up here and check out my Robinhood, re actually check out my GoPro recap, is it valuable, and check out this other video right here, and as always, thank you for watching, I really